out. Absolutely. We greatly appreciate it. Troy, you got any shout outs or anything you'd like to say to us, Miss P? I just want to say shout out to Billy, shout out to Purple Queen, shout out to No And shout out to the representatives up there. We appreciate you coming up and speaking to our city. We love to hear our city supporting each other. Hey, Miss P. Hey, Miss P. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, that's exactly what we're talking about, but um, the violence, and, and, and right now we're talking about, you know, politicians, and in my opinion, a way to keep the ones that we need going strong, such as the Tony Paytons in the world, such as the Black Girl family in the world, who's really trying to make a change, and, and stay on top of politics in Philadelphia. Now, a very, very, very important issue that we're going to talk about right now is that there is a big law going on right now, or attempt to change the law, to require you to have a photo ID to vote. Many people, let, as such as myself, believe that this is a form of disenfranchisement. They're trying to disenfranchise you and, you know, keep the people who need to vote from voting. You're saying on this state rep. So when, 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 when the Purple Queen says that, she clearly means Republican. I clearly mean... So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna... I'm she gonna, clearly doesn't mean that, though. I clear. I am unbi. I am unbiased. And I, I'm, yeah. So I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you how this thing came about. There's an organization called uh, named Alec, okay. uh, which is the American Legislative Exchange Council. Alec is funded by a lot of corporations, and Alec does these policy briefs that they deliver to more conservative lawmakers who tend to be Republicans. So this is. Boilerplate legislation that has passed in like nine other states and it passed here in Pennsylvania along partisan lines. I don't think you had one Democrat vote for it in committee, mm. on the floor, mm. you know, both in the House and the Senate. Okay. So when I say they, I mean Republicans no. because that's who passed this bad piece of policy. Right. Right? right? And when they passed it, they said, well, 99% of people have an idea. Right, it'd be about 74,900 something that don't have an ID, right? And it's not okay to disenfranchise the, those those people that don't, right? right? Because they presented no evidence that voter fraud is a problem or voter impersonation right. is a problem. In Pennsylvania, in, it's in Pennsylvania or any other jurisdiction, okay? Right, they just stipulated to that in court. So when this thing passed, they said 99% of people have an ID. In their own numbers, they did an analysis of people that are registered to vote versus the people with and dot IDs, either uh, non-driver's license or driver's license. Right. And they were off by about 900%. Oh, dang, 900%? That so sounds it, like a instead lot. of it being 1%, right. Right. it's 9.2, right? But then if you look at the people with expired pen dot IDs, right. it, it can't be expired more than a year. Right. That number balloons to about 1 million to oh. close to 1.2 million people, gotcha. right? So this is legislation that was pushed primarily by Republicans right. based on a <coughs> lie, right. right? And this is, and, and some people have called it a modern day poll tax, a wow. reemergence of Jim Crow. Wow. Because folks that look like you and I mm -hmm. couldn't vote if they couldn't pass a literacy test. That's right. And, 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 and one thing that, that, that I'm going to ask everybody out there that's listening, go to YouTube type in Fannie Lou Hamer's speech to the Democratic National Convention in 1964. Say it again. 1964 Fannie Lou Hamer's speech to the Democratic National Con Convention. Okay. It's about nine minutes. Mm -hmm. She tells the story of how she was arrested, beaten, mm -hmm. and stopped, harassed, wow. just for trying to register to vote. Right. Right? So they said it was 1%. It's more like 16 or, wow. or 14 percent and that's right? a great but number. even if it's one percent it's 74,000 people wow. who don't have the ID right so you make them jump through hoops right and, and my it took it took us six years to get my grandmother's birth certificate she was born wow. to sharecroppers in Florida wow the state of Florida says she doesn't exist wow she has five children to prove that she does wow. and multiple grandchildren mm. to prove that she doesn't mm. exist right mm. so we had to go through this whole rigmarole and figure out how to document her birth right and give it to the state of Florida in order for them to be sure of birth wow that's amazing right so 74,000 people it's not okay to do that to them, right? right but it's much larger than that it's about a million people mm. 
So this is currently in the courts, and you know there's been, and the state is defending this, and they stipulated they have no evidence. Right. They have no evidence, right, that, that voter fraud exists or anything like that. You need both a Social Security right. card, which will cost you cost money you to get money. your Social Security card, right. and a birth certificate, which will cost, cost you, money. you money, right, to get. That's why people call the modern day poll tax. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. Because Yes, they may give you the ID for free if you go into PennDOT and say, I need an ID for voting purposes. Right. But if if they're not going to waive the fee for a birth certificate, they're not going to waive the fee right. for a social security card. That's the key part. You have to have the supporting documentation, which is where this and, problem and, lies. And, 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 not only social security card and the birth certificate, right? Right. And it has to be the one with the raised seat. Wow. And you also have to have two proofs of residence. Wow. The lease agreement. Your mortgage bill, a W-2, That's crazy. tax records, a utility bill. Some of those can't be used. Right. Right. So if I'm 19, right. Right. And you don't with my parents. Mm. I don't have an ID. Mm. I might be able to get my Social Security card. I might be able to get my birth certificate. Right. But if I don't have a bill in my name, right. What you gonna I can't get that ID. Wow. Wow. What is that other than disenfranchised? Wow. Right. Wow. So if if they don't get their desired result of disenfranchising people. Right? right. What they're what they're putting out there is so much misinformation that people are think they can't vote anyway. Right. And not show up. They're just giving up right off the bat. And if you look at fundraising emails sent out by the Republican Party chair of Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and also the majority leader of the Pennsylvania House, Mike Turnside from Allegheny County, right. they said voter ID will enable Governor Romney to win Pennsylvania. Yeah. This is a partisan floor. Wow. Because the people that are disproportionately affected right. are minorities, Minority. poor people, right. and the elderly. That's right. So that's why you got groups like AARP, the ACLU, mm -hmm. and all of the, you know, I filed a friend of the court brief as well, because this is something that's important. Right, right. City needs some Novocaine. Oh, Novocaine, not Hurricane. Don't say Hurricane. <laughs> Novocaine, Novocaine. Hey, 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 no alcoholic beverage. Yeah, Novocaine, Novocaine. No alcoholic beverages. Hurricane. That's the that's the wine over again. Oh okay. <laughs> baby. So anyway, uh, W P E B. Eighty-eight point one break. Yeah, I love it. You have to take my come back and you know join. Oh, we got the phone ringing too. Right, we got about fifteen minutes. Ten really to get our topics in. But you know how we do here at Community Radio West Philly. We talk to the community first. So here we go. Hi, thank you for calling 88.1 Purple Eyes and Kisses. How are you? Who's this? Hey, boy status. What's up? One of the big Philly promoters here in Philadelphia. How are you today? And shout out to uh, Tony Payton for all the hard work he's been doing with violence in the city. Man, we got a lot going on. Running ourselves against the arts, against violence under uh, Payton and Jenkins. So uh, I want to definitely shout out the work he's doing and, and tell about committing everything he's doing. That's what's up. He hear you right here, stay right. Hey, I appreciate it, brother. That was proud. That was proud, brother. Now tell us, as a as a um a, a Philadelphia promoter, how how does violence really affect what you do in the city of Philadelphia? Well, it really has, man. I mean, I've, I've, I've been in the game for about uh, eight and a half years now and, and working out until least for the last five. And I've watched two to three clubs close down because of violence, because of things happening. So it, it really is affected uh, money for me. And uh, I'm originally from Chester, Pennsylvania. They're uh, um, state controlled because of the violence that has been going on, a uh, state of emergency, or rather. And uh, actually, I had to close my studio because of this. So, so violence has, has affected, affected not just people with the effects of uh, finance too and businesses and everything, so. Right, right, and that's a real. Well, we greatly appreciate you calling in. We, we understand your struggle. You want to give any shout out? Uh, definitely, I just want to shout out the whole, the whole tri-state area. Uh, shout out everybody down at uh, Club Bora. Now I got to do my shame this club. No yeah. shame, no shame. <laughs> I definitely want to shout out Purple Queen, man. She's always going hard for the tri-state as well. And I, I look forward to getting up in Charleston. Early and often, well, Shukran, thank you very much for calling in Proposal Kisses. And I know our video team got you be presented in the building. They say, what's up? <laughs> Early and often, thanks for calling in, Status, and we'll talk to you soon. Hey, status? Early. Early and often. That's what I'm at. All right. So, 
You guys talked about this voter ID. I'm going to get myself together in two seconds. Okay. Go. All right. So there, there was a uh, there was a big rally. Uh, on the Capitol steps coordinated by the uh, NAACP and some other groups. You had a lot of folks voicing their displeasure with this law. And, uh, you know, that was done in preparation for the trial, uh, which is still underway. Testimony, uh, I believe, resumes on Monday. It's before Judge uh, Simpson in Commonwealth Court. And uh, hopefully the judge will do the right thing and delay implementation of this thing. Um, actually, they should, uh, you know, Avoid the whole law as unconstitutional because I think it is. It does violate the 24th Amendment. Right. And uh, we'll go from there. They can void it in total or delay implementation. And uh, because there's just so many unanswered questions, this affects well over a million people. It's bad policy. It was rushed through, uh, you know, without proper vetting. And there were a lot of unanswered questions. And the whole thing was based. I mean, their, their fiscal notes said it would cost about a million dollars, and that was under the assumption that it would only affect 1% uh, of the people, but now that it's closer to 14.4%, um, so it's going to cost somewhere around $15 million at a time, oh. at a time where, where we are cutting things wholesale. Um, you know, 70,000 people were just eliminated from general assistance. 70,000 people were cut off of welfare. Not welfare, but right. general assistance. All right, which includes Gen welfare. Gen not, not necessarily. Can you correct me? It, it, does, it doesn't actually include welfare. People will still receive welfare if they get it. But general assistance is for people. If you're taking care of somebody disabled, if you're temporarily disabled yourself, or you may be uh, recovering from you know, drugs or alcohol, those sorts of things. So all of these people, a number of different people, mostly with disabilities, mm -hmm. are being cut off from $235 a month. Wow. And the Commonwealth has the gall to spend, I mean, they first said it was a million dollars, but really it was about nine million. Mm -hmm. And now they were, I mean, they were, they were all, they said it was 1%, now it's really about 14.4, so it's approaching $15 million. Wow. So, so, I mean, in, 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 in retrospect, what do they expect someone who can barely walk, who is receiving this assistance, like you know, what are the what do they say are some of the alternatives for these people once they cut these things? Like, what do they say that these people can go out and actually do for themselves? So, what what they say, what they say is that this this is sort of another one of the things that falls into the the, the ever growing category of this is what they say. I, I don't say this, but this is what they say, and they being the Republicans that are in charge currently, they say this is one of those things that fits into the category of waste, fraud, and abuse. Mm. That's what they say, and they say, well, we're going to cut this off, and people that are on it may be able to apply for a couple different other things. Other things. But, I mean, you, if you're sharp enough to figure out how to navigate those things with your disability, however it sort of manifests itself, you may apply, you may sort of qualify for other things, but it may, I mean, you may for a couple of months be kind of without. 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 And that's really crazy. So, and, and they don't think about this because they don't have perspective. They don't understand how people live. I mean, in their world, sort of everything is hunky-dory and they've never struggled. Right. If you've never struggled, you have no perspective. Right, no perspective. They the say, I right. love you more than myself, I love you no more. I uh, know, that's like, that's like so different than me. Yeah. I'm nothing without you guys, okay? <laughs> we gotta figure this out.